Okay, so this week we are doing front and rear suspension. Hey guys, so this week you might notice that I'm not in the garage. The reason for that is because halfway through chopping up the video, I realized there's a lot of fundamental information that I needed to include so that you could understand how to tune your suspension properly. So before we even get started on touching the bike and you know tweaking things, I wanted to make sure that I explained some of the fundamentals of how the terrain and your speed and that sort of stuff is gonna change how your suspension acts and reacts. So the first video this week is gonna cover off on suspension fundamentals and basically the second video is then gonna cover off on how to actually apply that to your bike because I'm continuously tweaking my suspension according to what surface I'm riding on because if I'm riding on the road and I'm gonna hit some twisties, uh, in general, I want firmer suspension so it, I can keep that wheel down, keep grip. Then when I go off-road, what I want to do in general is soften up my suspension, uh, which allows me to kind of float over a few of the bumps and manage that traction much better than if it was super stiff and it was throwing my steering all over the place. So that's kind of the difference between uh, the suspension setups at each end of the spectrum. And there's a huge sort of um, gap in the middle there of tweaking your suspension or tuning your suspension to meet that terrain and speed and your riding skills, that sort of stuff. Because, you know, there's some really, really great riders who will do some of your big desert, you know, rallies like your Dakar and that sort of stuff. And you would be surprised at how stiff their suspension is. The reason for that is because they're still trying to balance getting traction, but they're traveling at speeds like up to 200 Ks an hour, right? If you're going 200 Ks an hour, a bump this big has a huge difference on how your suspension reacts. So if your suspension is too soft, it's gonna smack that bump, bottom out your suspension and throw you over the bars. So we don't want that to happen. And if you happen to be that sort of a rider, I'm assuming you've got some sort of sp suspension guy anyway. So I'm gonna focus on the other end of the scale, which is people who wanna be able to ride on road and then flick a few little uh, settings and then be able to ride off road. And that's where we're gonna focus on in this video. So without any further ado, I'm gonna hand, hand you over to a guy who's much more knowledgeable than me because someone uh, the other day called out uh, my knowledge and said, who are you, the expert on tires? So I'm like, cool, no worries. I'm gonna hand over to someone who's much more wise than me. So take it away, Mr. Freeman. Here's how your suspension works on a flat road versus a dirt road. As you can see, on a dirt road, your suspension absorbs a lot more so it needs to be soft to prevent you from being thrown off the bike. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more Scrambler goodness. Cheers, mate. So now we're gonna talk about how shock absorbers absorb those bumps while you're going over them. Now, I'm gonna use some diagrams to help just to make it easier to explain, and I'm gonna focus on the rear suspension when I'm explaining it because it's just easier and they both basically do the same thing. They just have some different components which achieve the same thing. But really, when it comes to tuning, knowing the basics and the fundamental pieces of rear suspension will help you to tune front suspension. Uh, and then we'll get into that in more detail in my next video. So, when you hit a bump, it compresses the spring. So in suspension terms, that's actually known as compression, surprisingly, or bound. The thing is, not all bumps are the same. Some of them are small, some are big. So if you hit a small bump, it might only compress the spring a little bit. But if you hit a big bump, it compresses the spring a lot further. So what you might find is that you hit the bump stop, 
and that is basically meaning that your suspension is bottomed out and it can't compress any further. This differs between bikes, but for my Scrambler 1200, for example, the travel distance is 250 millimeters. So that is the maximum distance that that suspension will travel until it hits a hard stop. Keep that number handy because it'll be useful later. So once your spring is compressed, because it's a spring and it's under tension, what it wants to do is decompress and it wants to naturally bounce the wheel back down towards the ground. This is known as tension or rebound. So when you're setting your suspension, the two main things that you need to know are compression and tension. Compression is when it's going up and compressing, and then tension is how fast it goes back down and to touch the ground. We'll get into those more in the next video, especially uh, focusing on how to set your suspension and hard and fast or soft and slow settings for those compression and tension uh, elements of your suspension. Probably the hardest kind of concept to understand is your uh, tension setting or how fast the spring decompresses and returns the wheel back down towards the ground. So that setting is very finicky in terms of finding the right spot for it because if it's too slow you're going to be revving and not getting power to the ground because the wheel hasn't hit the ground by the time you're revving or you know your wheel is just floating over bumps so you might not be getting as much grip or traction as you need to start to corner and that sort of stuff but if you set it too hard or too fast it's going to push that wheel back down so fast that it basically is going to feel like the bike's kicking back up at you when it's not necessarily bottoming out so what you'll find is that's a bit of a sweet spot because you need to adjust it so that it's just you know just returning back fast enough that it can get traction on the ground i usually start right in the middle so i count all the way out how many clicks the thing rolls around clockwise and then i count back halfway so i think for my scrambler it's about 11 clicks back uh, from either direction because it's in the middle so that's where I started and I've pretty much left it there because I haven't really needed to adjust it too much and I've found it's pretty pretty mellow um, when I need it to be but also fast enough that I'm getting traction to the ground so just keep that in mind and apply it how it suits you So if you're traveling off-road and it's a really sort of bumpy section, what you want to do is set your suspension to be soft. But if you're going fast and your suspension is too soft, it's going to actually travel up too quickly and then bottom out. When it bottoms out, it's got nowhere left to absorb that shock. So that shock keeps traveling upwards, whether it be through your handlebars towards your face or through your seat towards your backside which can potentially send you over the bars. Not a good uh, way to be. So what you wanna do is just dial in that suspension to the speed and terrain that you are going to be riding on. And that's why it's kind of really important for me to talk about these fundamentals so that you can set it for how you ride. Because how I ride will be really different to how you ride, potentially. Now. If you checked the owner's manual for the 1200XE Scrambler, it says any off-road, set it as soft as you can. What I would recommend is start soft, and then if you find yourself bottoming out because you're going pretty quick, just start to wind it back a little bit. And then what you can do is find that sweet spot. It's worth just going out and just trying uh, a few different pieces of terrain and messing with those uh, settings on your suspension so then you can learn it for yourself and then you can adjust it for yourself down the track. Right, so that is suspension fundamentals. 
I am not going to go into all the limitless physics and things behind it because there's much smarter people out there than me that have done YouTube videos. So if you find a really good in-depth video, um, please post it in the comments below. I love seeing people sharing knowledge because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to pass on some of the knowledge that I've gotten from mechanics and people who have worked on race teams and also having just worked on my own scrambler. So stick around, uh, click that notification button, uh, like the video, it helps a lot and uh, please subscribe. Uh, and next week you'll get a notification when the video comes out. So see you then and I hope it was informative.